when you know how to manipulate with this game, mm. right? When you know how to manipulate this game, you, you know, you, you just go on. It's like playing a guitar, that a track that makes sense. You understand? That's how real raw b boying is. I mean, in this video that I do. Yeah, I love uh, you said that. Yeah, man. So it's very, very important. It's yeah. very important. Uh -huh. That's how it is, man. Uh -huh. I mean, you know. Um, um, talk to me. Sorry, cut short. Uh, I'm, I'm very intrigued. Because, again, you, you've got the original recipe. You've got the, the DNA, the first generation mm. DNA of breakdancing mm. in London and UK. Mm. What was it like? Explain that feeling. Explain the conditions. Explain that environment uh, at Covent Garden when you got on those cobbles, when you got on the floor in, in Covent. And what were you up against? What were the things that you were up against? Because it was a very different time. And you guys were learning as you go but you knew the recipe. You knew what what you what what was expected. Killer Killer Podcast. Killer Killer Official .com. You need the Kellervision app. Twenty four seven mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Music and street culture. Killer Coward Podcast. Let the games begin. Oh, let's just double check that. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> Sounding good. My mic you, sounds nice. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London or as central as you need to be, choose to be, desire to be. Big shout out to all the originals, people sharing and caring and doing their bit for the culture, the community and the powers that be. Hold tight, pirate.com, 24-7 music, podcasts and dance studios all across the UK. And all affiliates, if you've got a television app, you know what time it is, it's the sport and art street culture. It ain't just podcasts, it's me, docs, full docs, mixes, the little <laughs> come on. What more do you want? Free download, iPhone and Android. Inside the house, oh my goodness, it's such a pleasure. We staggered in trying to get him in here, but we finally got him in here. This is one of the original break dancers from back in the days to now. If you don't know, get to know. Live to break inside the house. The mighty. Everyone raise your glasses, hold your hands in the air and wave them like you just don't <laughs> care. Howl it inside Yo, the house. what up, my brother? What are you saying? You all right? How are you? Yeah, man. You are most certainly one of the more colourful characters in the scene. That it, Not only is it always a pleasure to see, pleasure to be around, but you also send that energy onto the dance floor. Uh, to try and get you on and to actually have you on, I know this is going to be an absolute joy for people to be a part of and, and, and witness. Well, you know, it all starts from interest, really. I mean, in life, it's what you really want to do, what makes you attractive to whatever you want to do. Mm. And um, We're talking about energy here. That's what I'm going to get into. Shall I tell you why? Because it takes a lot of character build mm. to go through a lifetime of a genre and a discipline mm. and a and a profession we'll call it yeah. um there's more recent videos that have come up where you have been break dancing mm. outside your uh world-renowned hat store turpite lane yeah, yeah. and my goodness uh it's almost like the next fucking day <laughs> So, so yeah. what we're talking about here, and this is what I really want to hone in on this podcast, is your legacy and how you've transferred and continued consistently the energy. And you, it doesn't seem like you get wavered. It doesn't feel like you're ever stifled. You're just ongoing. Yeah, it, it, it actually it comes actually from from martial arts. Really, I mean, I was involved in martial arts back in the days, ah. and um, a few of our friends' school I used to go in Hornsey. North London Stationers Company School, you know, a f quite a few of us was involved in it in school, hmm. about 40 to 50 people, hmm. you know, we um, we had nothing else to do. I mean, these brothers who was involved, most of them were black people, black brothers, and they used to be into sound system and all that. And, you know, I come from background, cultural background, Turkish, mm -hmm. and, you know, um, and we used to all hang around together. I mean, we, you know... I, you know, I used to hang around with these brothers who used to go around with sound system and all that. I mean, um, later on, a couple of years later, 79, 80, we all used to hook up in late night. You know, we used to go late night movies, uh, Fridays. We used to go Wood Green, Holloway, 
We used to travel. We used to have a lot, a lot of passion for all this. And mm. we, used, we used to like, um, we used to collect big, massive, colourful posters, you know, black and white flyers, and um, price them at the back. And we used to like do deals at school. Really? And after school, we used to sell them and all that. Really? And, yeah, man. And we used to, we used to, like, every film we used to see and all the characters and the stars and the co-stars in the film, we, we sometimes when we used to look at the film, we didn't even look at the faces. We couldn't even mm. tell the way they were, like, fighting who who was. And, you know, my kind of hip-hop side of the talent comes from really there. There's a stoic approach to a lot of uh, martial arts. I think that that resonates very much in your... Uh, the, the way that you handle yourself. There's certainly a, a stoicism there and a, a spiritual kind of energy. Yeah, man, it was a, it was a quick resembles. Mm. It was a quick bridge over. When, when I was doing martial arts um, and um, when breaking came in, like um, Dolby in his interview, something like... Big up, like Dolby. No, yeah, big up Dolby. Gotta say, for no, the connect, like big up Dolby. Big up Dolby. 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 You know big what up. time it is, brother? Aye. So yeah, I mean around November to November sometime, I think yeah. Malcolm McLaren come up on the tube. Oh, and this was around eighty two. For those of you who don't know from living out of town or living yeah, in a rock, yeah, yeah. the tube it was, was a very tube. famous te television. Program, that right? was the first that was the Jeez. first time they showed Buffalo Girls, it was on the tube and later on it was Top of the Pops and all that. Yeah. I, I I personally used to be in yards right like 10, I used to change channels all the time, all the time, all the time. I mean, there was a, when I used to change channels, there was a time when I bumped into a program called Black on Black, where I saw New York City Breakers, Gladys Knight in a Pips video, mm -hmm. saved the overtime for me. And um, that, actually, that, and um, Buffalo Girls, and later on, obviously, Flashdance, saw that in the <laughs> cinema. That really, really, really caught my attention because in martial arts, in martial art, it's actually, there's karate, there's yeah. kung fu. You see, people more preferred more kung fu than karate because in kung fu, obviously, like you know, there is different different styles yeah. of fighting in kung fu. You get dragon, mantis, phoenix, you know, all these kind of things. And mm. these are not very similar to each other. Mm. They're all different kind of styles. So we used to personate all these. In martial art times, we used to personate. We used to go around in schools and mimic um, certain martial artists, actors in the film and all that. And we actually really? used to be really, really good. We used to make sound effects. Even the sound effects that in the martial art, when you go... <laughs> Hey, you. We used to even do that. You understand what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. And that, that actually we was really, really good at. As much as passion today we have for hip hop <sighs> and what we sussed about, it, it comes from there. You understand? When hip hop came in, when Buffalo Girls came in and New York Sea Breakers, Gladys Knight and the Pips yeah. and Flash Dance, I mean, this didn't take. It wasn't so hard for me to catch up on this man. I mean, it, it, it was very detailed. I was very detailed in martial arts anyway. It wasn't just martial arts we were doing. We would talk about the films, the actors, even like why would Golden Harvest be more better than Shaw Brothers and, you know, and, and Ocean Shores and that and this. You know, Golden Harvest was like Warner Brothers, Whoa. you understand? When you say Warner Brothers, you're expecting a really, really quality film. But, you know, then again, when, we st when, when, it, when Buffalo Girls and... Um, uh, New York Sea Breakers, uh, Gladys Knight and the Pips, or Flashdance died. A couple of months back, I started around 82, early 83. See, when we saw uh, Buffalo Girls, that's when the interest sparked off. This was 82, late 82. Mm. And when, um, and then um, around 1983, early 83, we had a friend called Anthony Thomas. He's on my Facebook friend. Mm -hmm. Anthony Thomas's father was working in German um, TV broadcast and I think he was working for ZDF hmm. and he had a documentary film called Wild Style. I believe we was one of the first, I'm not trying to say who's who had first or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, we, I believe we had Wild Star and Star Wars. Yeah. See them two <laughs> on, the, on the wall For those there? of you are listening and watching, those, we got it on the wall. Those two documentaries... Mm -hmm was brought over from Anthony Thomas, his father sent him, and it was in German subtitles. It really? was English speaking, the original, but it was German subtitles. There was a, there's a friend called Paul Barnwell, and he, lived in, he lives in Hornsey, he still lives in there, Uplands Road. All 
we formed, obviously, I'm skipping, but we formed a crew called Jedi's Crew. When, I, when we used to go to station as cool, mm-hmm. we had a crew called Jedi School. Uh, it was not it, it, Jedi's crew. It wasn't my. It wasn't my crew. It was Franklin's crew. It was Riley Franklin's, and I was uh. in the crew, and um, and um, we uh, come from a martial art background, and it did not take us long to catch up on breaking. That's incredible. No, it didn't catch up on breaking. We sussed that. What was right and what was wrong? When Wildstar, when we had Wildstar, when Anthony Thomas brought in Wildstar, we piled up in Paul's house. And all of us, the time we pressed play on Wildstar, no one blinked, no one gasped, no one talked, no one burped, Mm. nothing. We took in everything at one time, you understand? Sounds like, it sounds like my audience right now listening to you talk, bro. Like, unbelievable. That's Wildstar, crazy. When we saw Wildstar watching, being so experienced at martial art movies, and not martial art, doing martial art. We was good at martial art too. Yeah. We used to go to them. But we were so experienced on films, talking about films, posters, black and white flyers. We was even talk about why is that poster creased? Why'd you crease the poster so it loses value? I mean, mm. whatever. If you, had a, if you had a pin on it or ripped or whatever, yeah, yeah. you know. But that's where our talent come from. When we saw Wildstar, it was unbelievable, man. Mm. It was so unbelievable. I think, it, I think it was almost viral the way that it landed on these shores. And you know what? To, to, to believe it or not, in about a couple of weeks' time to a month, Star Wars came in. Anthony Thomas, he brought in Star Wars as well. It was a God's gift, you understand? It was a God's gift. That, that, and I think yeah. either earlier Question. than maybe that, or I think I predict it was after that was shown, whilst I was shown in ICA Cinema, mm. Van the Mole, right? And that's where it was. You understand? We saw Wild Style way before B Street. We saw Star Wars. You understand? I mean, everyone saw it, but we had that early edge. Yeah. It was a God's gift that we had that edge. You understand? And that's what enlightened me to focus on the dips and dabs in this culture. I mean, how it should be done, how it should be preserved. You know, I mean, when I watched Wild Style, what shocked me was Crazy Legs and Ken Swift. Mm. Crazy legs mm. at at the end part yeah. in the amphitheater when Ramo Z, oh way back, oh wait, I know I need a crowd politician. When he done Ramo that set Z. with that fat afro, <laughs> the converse or the pro kids with the natural trousers and all that, everything. And then Kenny in the yeah. Dixie, yeah. it's all over, man. Yeah, you yeah, understand yeah. what I'm saying? Me and Dolby, me and Dolby loves that scene of Kenny. You yeah. understand yeah. what I'm saying? And don't forget legs at the end. That is too Crazy. authentic and traditional. Love it. Him, Kenny, and Little Lep in um, New York City Breakers. When I saw these, when I saw this cat on Black on Black in um, um, Gladys Knight in a Pip saved the overtime for me. Man, he was the Don man. You understand what I'm saying? He was more in the video than ever any of the others. But what I'm trying to say is the set that Little Lep done. No one can mimic it even now. <laughs> if you try and mimic it, you can't mimic it. <laughs> it is too good. Very traditional, very spontaneous breaking. Love it. And this this really, really got me involved in it, man. It's what know? gets you off, in it? As a kid, it stays. It almost stains and imprints your mind forever, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I mean, if you really know how hip-hop wants you to preserve certain elements, yeah. what it owns, it could be graffiti, DJ and MC and breaking... Breaking, look, nowadays, I'm not talking about nowadays times, but back then, you know, people used to do, obviously, like windmills, halos, and that and this, but with style, with mm. flavour. I mean, mm. Icy done it with flavour and all that, despite he went through gymnasts, gymnastics and that and this, but, you know, he covered up and he blended it in with style. You understand mm. what I'm saying? Windmills, drills, a turtle, all yeah. of that was all done with style and all that, but there was more deeper than that. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, keeping it up fundamentally, traditionally, it was very, very hard to focus. I mean, I can name you very, very rare people from back in the days till now yeah. that who still got it is... Retain Dol- the style. Is me, mm-hmm. Dolby, Purvis has got it. Look, Purvis, Dolby, me. Us three right now, mm-hmm. I'm so happy that, you know, it was really kind of like about us back in the days as well, and it still is. You understand what I'm saying? Purvis, Purvis is really hungry, man. I mean, I remember that cat, he, before he had his operation and all that, you know, there was a time that I used to hang around with him the second time round, and there was times that I used to just go my work, I was really in love with my work and all that, but, 
you know, me and him would talk and all that. And I would say to him, you know what? You carry on, bro. Mm. You know what I mean? You got that flavor and all that. There'll be a time you be up that level and all shit like that. The pervers knows. Ain't anything wrong with saying things like that. I knew, I knew the end, how it's going to be. So pervers had that like um, hunger because yeah. when, when sometimes in, in the first round, you know, I was very hungry when it first, first started. Mm-hmm. And obviously certain people probably weren't in that limelight. But when second time round in the 90s, mm. you know, I saw pervers was really, really hungry. And I was very much intact with my work and I was used to love my work and all this. Yeah. But what kind of sometime let me down on breaking was... A few bad habits on bunning and that and this, it does slow you down on it, which Purvis never done all shit like that, mm. you understand? He's pure. He always, was yeah. very pure. He was very, very active and, you know. How much he, of it, can I just ask? Just, go on, bro. Sorry to inject, but at what, your, your natural ability of uh, Kung Fu martial arts, mm-hmm. moving into breakdancing, that the, the transferability of that seems obvious. Uh, you seem to absorb style, uh, and it, from what I understand, there it, it, adapt, adaptively you know what you know what the style is and how how to um, uh, yeah how to kick ass. At what point? I get the feeling that maybe you you're one of those kind of anomalies of people that are able to just do things very instantaneously. Um, I'm not suggesting at any point that there's a complacency mm. to this, but to start smoking and doing all those mm. things, uh, perhaps there's that uh, over familiarity with your mm. own abilities, and you know that it's almost like ingrained. Mm. You know it because you've you've come through this this mm-hmm. um, entrance of, uh, of of martial arts. Breaking is, you know what? Breaking is about really and truly. When you do style breaking, it, this is my opinion. Mm. Okay, I'm not speaking on behalf of other people or nothing. This is my opinion, mm-hmm. and I know, say, a few other people know this. That is true. Mm-hmm. When you when you're breaking. There's always a epitome part of this game, you understand? There is, you can go deep, you understand? Meaning, breaking is actually, when you're doing it, you've got to swirl of it. You understand? When you do your footwork or your freezes, you've got to show off. You've got to, mm. like, make it look slick. You know, when, you, when you're in NBA, all them brothers, the way they hoop them balls, very, very skanky. You mm. see them playing around, being cheeky. Mm. You understand? That's what b-boying is. You understand one so you mm. can you can do a simple move and make it look skanky. Swag. Look at Pervez today. When Pervez, I see Pervez's documentary and um, his dips and dabs, all them little video clips. Mm. It's very simple, but it's nice. If you told the next person to do it like that, it won't come out like that. It won't come out like but that. it makes it so simple. Yeah. But it's the flow yeah, and yeah. the attitude. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. Exactly like Dolby's. Mm. Exactly like mine. You understand? Ask mm. cats. We're from the same school with different flavours. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? And, you know, there's no argument about, you know, who's best and that and this. We could have argued this back in the days and all that. Well, it's not nice to do that now, you know. It's not a good, you know what I mean? Because we don't really deep, deep break down. Purvis still breaks. You know, he's very, very active. Me, Dolby, we're not really active. But, if I, you know, I'm thinking of getting active. I like predicting something. Thinking of I'm, getting active. Yeah, man. Well, I Come am going to get active, man. Well, yeah. well you know what? If, even so, if I went down right now, I'm sh- uh, when I, if I go down, I wouldn't go down if I'm not sure that I'm going to preserve it nice. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? I mean... Is each move, is each time you throw down as critical as that? You're only as good as your last throw down? Is it that kind of mentality? Yeah, you know what it is. You know where... You know, I'm 54, right? And what you see right now on this little clip that you're yeah. busting right yeah. now, right? This, um, this comes from, this is adrenaline. Adrenaline only comes from love and passion. Mm. If you don't have love and passion, that adrenaline don't happen. You can't make that happen all the time. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Because if you've got a legacy and you've got a name, right? I mean, this video I flinged on on 15th of July, right? That was my birthday. For the last three years, I've been fingering out videos on my birthday to people only to let them know I'm still there. You understand what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And I can still rock it. And I want other 54-year-olds, if I can do it, I want them to know that if I can do it, you can do it as well. But the only way you can do it, right, if you've got passion, understanding, right, and you know you're going to preserve that, right, on the floor, you do it. Age actually is not the, the, the thing. 
You understand? It's, it's constant practice, obviously, but some people, yeah, it some, like that, it, yeah. it, it, it's in them. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But not every move, obviously, not every move. Certain moves might look easy and all that, but bro, you know, it looks nice. You mm. understand? You can do the same move. I can do the same moves. But if mine looks better than you, there must be something there. You understand? You got, mm. to, you got to do a move how hip hop, traditional hip hop, wants you to preserve it. You understand oh, what God, I'm saying? That's sick. B boy is. Yeah. Yeah. All that. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? You've got to be very, very funky. James Brown. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, actually, I was just going to say so it something that came that, that came up in my head when you were talking about the influences that were around you at the time. And we can't can't neglect the the funk era, black exploitation. When you marry that with martial arts and all the other aspects <coughs> of popular culture of its time, it almost like it, you couldn't have made um, break dancing in any other in any other time. Like you see, that's the, the skank, the swag. The, mm. the, it actually harks back to those kind of attitudes. It's very, culture. very important. It takes you down to the water well. If you skank it and you do it deeper, right, mm. you will find out <clears throat> you're taking the piss out of the whole thing. You actually got the whole package in your pocket yeah. and you're doing it like it's nothing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, you yeah, can yeah, tell yeah. by expression. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And in martial arts, I mean, we came to even till today. We've seen so much movies, right? Yeah. I'm not saying these two movies I'm about to name, I'm not saying they are better movies in fight ways or whatever, mm. but nothing holds back Warriors 2 and Prodigal Son. Prodigal Son. Now, oh. any late night lover out there that who knows about martial art movie, I love all martial art movies, but you always have to have that little, mm. you know, to keep you going. Is that your go-to video? Yeah. yeah My yeah. favourite videos is Prodigal Son and Warriors 2. What I love about Prodigal Son is that what I relate my break into and I've got my influence a little bit is be from where Summer Hung, near enough to the end, when Summer Hung's practising with a daughter and he's doing calligraphy, right? And he's wiggling around with his uh, brush and he's jumping up and holding his feet and he's still writing down in Chinese calligraphy. That... Them kind of things inspires Beautiful. me. You see, Summer Hong in the movie game, he's a top notch. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And people like him are very, very top notch. And um, I kind of like studied this through. When when it was breaking, it never took me hard to suss out. All mm. I needed to see is Wild Star and Star Wars. That's it. You understand what Transfer I'm saying? Transfer the skill straight and away. And obviously, yeah. Dynamic Rockers. You know, we see mm -hmm. like video clips from Dynamic Rockers. Live to Break was more about like Dynamic Rockers. Rocksteady, New York City Breakers, obviously. But we've done it nice, you understand what I'm saying? I've done it nice, actually. I myself done it nice. Yeah, you did. Because, um, I mean, if you see, if you, in this video, <laughs> in this video, what I like about myself, what I'm doing in this video, is the most important thing that you might not clock, but I'll tell you what it is that's so important in this little set I do in this video, is when you top rock, it's the get down into the footwork and the finish off. The get down into the footwork, that bridge is so important. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. Flick, slick, click. You understand what I'm saying? Put it up. Oh. Right, yeah, okay, man. so on that note, um, you mentioned the, uh, the I guess it's an endorphin hit of, or, or um, adrenaline, the sort of things that come and play when anybody, myself, beatboxing. You, you, hear this, you hear one word and it's like, you ready? That's two words. But you get what I'm saying? You may not be ready. It may be impulsively someone goes, go on, get on the... Get have a go. Talk to me, as a B-boy, what immediately goes into your head? And, and how, does, how do you control that adrenaline? Because what you're talking about here is, it's not just like, a, oh, I'll go and you know, grab the mic and say something. You're using the whole of your body at, at, at any given moment where you need to. Talk to me about what goes through your head when, when that... It's called upon you. Well, when someone is, yeah. when asks you to break yeah. or whatever. Yeah, it could be as simple well, as that. you know yeah. what? Earlier on, yeah, when me and you was having a little drink, remember when yeah. I was telling you about a gaff? Uh, yeah, I think, right? yeah. I won't I name the yeah, gaff, yeah, yeah. right? And the DJ. <clears throat> and I th when I looked up on um, Instagram and I saw some adverts on, um, oh, this cat's going to be playing old, old school electro beats and all that and this. And I said, yo, Halley ain't doing nothing in this time. Let me just go down there and check out. I might see some old friends down there. Yeah, have a drink in that, yeah. So I go down to this place down Portobello Road, I won't name the club or whatever. So I go down there and um, 
bought myself a little drink, you know, a little pint of beer, you know, halfway. And uh, the DJ, DJ sees me. I go up to the booth. DJ goes to me, Hallett, oh, it's a privilege to meet you here. It's good to see you. Don't worry, Hallett. I'll move the sofas round so you can break. Rotted. Hallett just went, took a zip. As he was taking the zip, he went, you don't say that to Hallett. You don't say things like that to Purvez or Dolby or any old school cat like that. Mm. Mate, yeah, I said, yeah. you shouldn't have said that, right? In yeah. my head, not to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> what does Hallett do in return? Leave the pint finished, get out. Mm. That's it. You don't say that to old school cats. Vibe killer. You don't say that to a MC, a beatboxer, mm. or whatever, a dancer. Now, let me see you do that again. And then his and his, what? You don't say that to us, man. Yeah. You understand? You don't catch me doing that, nothing. Yeah. I'll leave your club. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? It's some Clark Kent, Clark, Clark Kent Superman shit. Well, you, know, you know what I mean? You know what I mean, man? <laughs> <laughs> so that's what happened. Yeah. yeah, so that's what happened. But, you know, if, it, if, if, if I see my brothers, if I was to see a few of my brothers and all that and this, you don't get treatment like that in DJs, man. You don't say that to an old no, school no, no, cat. No, 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 no. Oh, don't worry, Hallett. Yeah, I'll move the sofas. What does Hallett think? All right. Your, your, your tag's tagged now. I'm pricing you. I'm going now. You won't yeah, see Hallett yeah, later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But where's Hallett? Well, he was here a minute ago. But you don't know. You don't say shit like that. You know, it's so. just, just bad social conduct, doesn't well, of it? Of course it's... it is, man. It, of course it is. I mean, um, huge you know, a lot of DJs knows about this. You don't you don't say things like that. Mm. You know, maybe he's a, not, he's, he's a new school DJ and all that. You don't say things like that. How can you say mm. that to Hallett? Don't worry, Hallett. Mm. I'm going to move the sofas. Hallett will leave then. You won't see Hallett next five minutes later. Done.